Hi, welcome to the DeviantArt Podcast. My name is Matt Buholtz, and I'm going to be your host today. Today, we are joined by Ali White. Hi, Hello. Allie. Hi. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. So just a little disclaimer, Allie and I have known each other for a few months now, so this is going to be real comfy. But it feels like a lifetime. <laughs> it feels like a lifetime. So you can find Allie on DeviantArt. Allie, what's your DeviantArt username? Skirts. But uh, instead of an S, there's three Zs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you can find Ali at DeviantArt slash skirts. Yes. Uh, where you make amazing and beautiful art. I guess. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Ali. Ali makes beautiful art. Thanks, so, buddy. Ali, before we get into all the fun, I want to hear a little bit about your history with DeviantArt. When did you start on DeviantArt? It was the year 2005. <laughs> I was a small weeb in North Idaho with dial-up internet, because <laughs> that's all we had. What, what intrigued you about DeviantArt? Well, you know, you could post, like, a lot of art. I think the only other site I had found, like, this was before, like, social media wasn't really, like, the thing, and there wasn't anywhere to put your art. It just, we weren't there yet. Right, yeah. And, like, there was, like, one site I was using, but there was, like, you could upload, like, two things. And, like, no no one went on that site. It was, like, a .org. No one knew about it. <laughs> and then I don't even know how I found DeviantArt, but I did. Thank God. And uh, I just I just started filling it up. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Every day after high school, I'd come home. And I always had new things to post because I didn't pay attention in school. I just drew. So I... I always had something to put. <laughs> well, one of the reasons I think that you and I like connected so well is we're both from the Northwest, both from very small towns. Yep. And so having a creative outlet was kind of something very special. Yeah. And I imagine a lot of our listeners also might find themselves in similar situations where they might not have that artistic community. So what sort of advice could you offer people who are listening or watching on YouTube uh, who may feel you know like a little bit more isolated with their art? Well, I mean, especially now, I feel like with the internet and social media, like you have the world at your fingertips now. It's, you can, you can do this from anywhere. And there's like so many like resources now too. It's just, the world's kind of your burrito with art. Like like nothing's impossible. That's a t-shirt. The world is your burrito with art. (laughs) Print it. Um, yeah, I guess for small town folks, like, I don't know. It's hard because it depends on like kind of your environment, like the kind of people that are around you, because I was constantly discouraged as an artist because it wasn't like the norm back home. And, um, really like the internet was my reprieve and it was like the one place I had that I could delve into that and find support Um, because it's hard like you're kind of sequestered off away from like more artistic communities and it feels kind of hopeless and that like you're like that one person like I don't know it's it's hard being in a small town and being into art and so I don't know it's well it's tough when you're not a farmer and you're (laughs) yeah yeah it was like the decision for most people in North Idaho was like, do you like horses or nursing? And I'm like, neither. Yeah. I mean, what you could have I? been like an amazing, like equestrian doctor, but uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> like, I really, it was a hard decision. Well, I love those. You took this leap and you're in Los Angeles now. Yeah. And you're doing your art. That like happened. you are like <laughs> killing it. <laughs> it's still, still, it hasn't really sunk in, but it was just kind of always a thing I wanted to do. And I felt like I would regret it if I didn't just like make that move. Um, and wow. Yeah. It's like now I'm surrounded by people who like live that very similar fast paced, always working kind of life. Everyone does something kind of in the creative field. And uh, it's just, it's, it's the perfect environment and it's like I feel normal here which is really nice I don't have to explain to anybody what I do for work like I say like yeah I'm a, I'm a freelance artist and they go oh okay but like back home they'd be like 
I don't understand. I'm like, what do you do? And I'm like, I, I'm you, an illustrator. You, like, you, you do draw- art for free? Yeah, they're like, you just draw cartoons all day? How does that work? I, I, I like this just- voice that you affected for people back home. It was- <laughs> <laughs> well, it was usually like a confused barista. Which there are numerous of in northern Idaho. Yeah, that, that's the other career choice. If you live in North Idaho, you can also be a barista on a roadside coffee house. Oh, they have a ton of those. The drive throughs They don't have them here in Los Angeles. It's not a thing here. It's so like, weird. Uh, like Dutch Brothers. Or <laughs> like, Dude, uh, like we had so many like small, coffee. Yeah. small little shacks <laughs> with a drive through window. We had like Java the Hut. Yes, and, like, they had good puns. <laughs> they, <laughs> they were always puns. But we like every... Every couple miles, you'd f- see one. I don't know what it's. It's just a Pacific Northwest thing because I, I, I know, know the the Seattle area. Well, the quieter areas have them yeah. as well. But then I went to the East Coast, and no one knew what I was talking about, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Well, I want to talk a little bit more going back from coffee to your art." Okay, okay. <laughs> so how would you describe your art style? Um, it's. Definitely an amalgam of like uh, anime and Disney because it's like I grew up on Disney, but then like I went through this like extreme weeaboo stage in like the early 2000s. So I was like just drawing anime. Um, And then I kind of like slowly went back to kind of the Western styles. And so, yeah, it's, it's just a mix of those things. Yeah, and it's uh, you draw like a bunch of like really great emotive sort of uh, just beautiful artwork. Aww, like it's so buddy. fun. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoy it. Aww. And the way that you do like hair and clothing is so dynamic. Like you just have a really great eye for making things look like they're flowing. It's it, it's easy to make things look super flat, and you never have that in your work. Yours always has like this dimensionality to it. I want a really sense works. of movement. That's important. So how how do you go about achieving that? Well, yeah, like billowing hair is a good way of making that a thing. I, I like I, how you say it so simply. I, I I feel like this is where you see that like Ali's like a master artist of just being like, well, to make a piece good, you start with something very difficult. <laughs> you, do, well, you do like the hard thing <laughs> and you say it like it's like the base level intro. I mean, I billowing hair isn't like extreme. But creating billowing hair is not an easy I get, task. I, all right, fair enough. Fine. I guess it's... So you, you find ways uh, to make it dynamic. Yeah, like, it, it just comes with practice. You know, when you're drawing, like, the preliminary sketch and you have, like, the figure of a body, usually what I learned in college was it's like, a, what is it, the line of action or some, some term. But it's like you kind of do, like, a you draw a nice little little line with a little bit of movement, add the hips, add the rib cage, and tilt them in various ways to try to get like um Yeah, you gotta get that balance yeah. as I knock the mic around. I'm sorry, How audio. How dare you? Um But yeah, it, it it it's a good way of getting something down that's not stiff. Um my favorite thing about working in Photoshop too is it's like you can do that 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 pelvis and rib cage shape and then tilt them at your will until you get something that feels just right um especially if something is like looking too stiff you can kind of go back in and add more angles and whatnot because yeah it is easy to like just get used to drawing the same stiff pose all the time and it just takes practice to be like maybe if I like tilt this this way and like draw like if you want a character to appear in motion like yeah the hair blowing one way and like the fabric kind of following through little things like that <laughs> but that's important some people things. don't consider those things yeah well it's just part of the journey man <laughs> it's part of the journey so i want to hear uh we've alluded to kind of different parts of your artistic journey mm-hmm. but take me from small town idaho to los angeles well, yeah, so um, I was always the art kid since the beginning of time, <laughs> and um, it was just like always the thing I I did. Uh, I was never not drawing. Um, I was 
that was that was just my bread and butter all the time. And then, you know, it took years to finally be like, I, I could never conceptualize doing art as a career. I was always just doing it for fun. And then the older I got, the more you're kind of faced with like this, like, so what are you going to do? I'm like, uh, <laughs> I never thought about it. Um, I almost went into journalism for college, which is weird. I like writing, I guess. I was like, this is a thing I could probably do. Yeah. Um, because like I was always discouraged uh, by everyone in school. Like my counselor told me that I was going to flip burgers the rest of my life when I told him I wanted to be an artist. And I was like, I don't really want to go to the community college here. I kind of want to go to like Seattle. And he's like, have fun. Have fun at McDonald's. And I'm like, you're a counselor, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you had the worst high school counselor that you Dude, could have had. Dude, everyone sucked there. Like, they were all, like, the teachers were, like, coaches first, teachers second, and they all knew I wasn't on any teams. And Football. So horses. Like, <laughs> yeah. They're like, <laughs> I wasn't out there throwing the old pigskin around, so I just... <laughs> Which, like, for those of you, I know this is an audio podcast, so you probably have already put together a very great mental picture of Allie, approximately, like, 500 pounds, very square of the shoulders. <laughs> like, so hearing she I'm didn't play... Tank. Yeah, hearing she didn't play football, probably stunning. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but what, what sort of... Uh, what sort of drive did you have then to continue through that? Because it sounds like you had a lot of forces kind of pushing against you having a creative <sighs> career. I'm really stubborn. <laughs> and I'm inspired by pure spite. I like, I like if I feel like, I just want to prove people wrong. Like that like really gets like the, the motor going. I'm just like, screw you, man. Like I can do what I want. Like, I'm kind of glad they were like that because I probably would have been like, oh, I'm comfortable here. Everyone's nice to me. Everything's fine. I'll just settle down and never like search for more. Instead, everyone made me very angry. And I was like, I'll show you. And I just picked up and moved to Seattle for school because um, I was interested in video games. So I was like, I'll go. I'll go do the art program over there because um, I really wanted to get away from everyone that I was stuck in school with for like the last... 12 years of my life <laughs> and all these people that like didn't understand or care what I was like trying to do. Um, so I figured like a whole new environment and like a school focused on that would be good. And for a while it was good, but then it's like, it's weird that I even faced opposition in art school. My professors were like really hard on me and they like used negative reinforcement constantly. Um, the problem with that is, like, everything in balance, but they didn't use any, like, hey, so, like, here's what you're doing good, but here's what you could work on. Like, don't be discouraged, but just, you know, here's... Instead, they're just, like, you're, like... <sighs> they just made me feel like I was, like, the worst artist in school all the time. And so then, like, I got really, like, down on myself. And I was like, maybe I'm not supposed to be an artist. Maybe everyone in Idaho was right. Like, this is stupid. Like, so I, like, got really depressed and I quit. And then after, they were like, I can't believe you just you just quit school like that. Like, you were, like, the best student in, in it, it, it the, I won't say the name of the school. Okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was like, why didn't you just tell me? Like, it's not like I was going to get a big head if you said like, hey, like you're good, but like here's what we'd like to see you like work on. Like if I just would have had any positive reinforcement at all, I probably could have hung in there and been like, no, I'm, I, I know I'm good at this. I'm going to keep going, but they just beat the love of art out of me. And I, I think I quit drawing for about a year and a half, which is a lot of time lost for an artist, I think. Um, and recovery took forever, like getting my bearings back and being like, no, I do want to do art. And then I, again, spike kicked in and I was like, you know what? Like, I don't need that college degree to do the thing that I love. So I just, I came home and I just got to work. And only recently did I decide to like, just make that big move and come to LA. Um, cause like when you're on social media, like you kind of find your tribe and I found a really great art community and everyone for the most part was here. And I felt I was having like FOMO, you know? I was like, I'm, I'm 
I just had like turned 30 and it's like, dude, the clock's ticking. Like if you don't go and have this experience, like when are you going to do it? So just do it. Do it while you know a bunch of people there and just see what happens. And, um, thank God I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been spectacular getting to know you now that you're down here. Like we, we went to comic con with you this year. Yes. You got to experience that, which was insanity. The best week of my life. Yeah. Tons of fun with lots of great artists. And, uh, then we've gotten you into the office a couple times now, so it's been fun having you in L.A. I know, it's still really surreal, and it still is awesome that it's like DeviantArt has been personified as this group of lovely folks. Yeah, look at all these lovely folks. Look at them. So look many them. lovely folks. Hey. You guys at, at home are really missing out by being on that side of the camera. There are a bunch of lovely folks. Yeah, gang's all here. Uh, but yeah, so... That's been pretty wild. Like, I think I think the San Diego thing that we did was one of the first things I did when I moved here. So it was like I had just unpacked, and it was like, and away! <laughs> yeah, I think we wrangled you from a U-Haul into a van. <laughs> I did an interview while I was on the road with all my furniture. I, like, pulled the U-Haul over and, like, did <laughs> this interview. <laughs> and it was just, like, this back-to-back. Like, I just moved in, and now, like... Then the caravan got me, and then off to San Diego we went. And I was just like, this is happening. Yeah. Okay. It was so, like, it's wild. Like, it's still, that whole weekend was like, I still, I think about it a lot. And I'm like, that was, like, for how short of a time we really had, it was like, it felt like we all spent, like, a year together or something. I don't know what it was. It's just, like, this magical thing that happened. (laughs) Yeah, and people can uh, still see a lot of uh, the stuff that happened that week on DeviantArt. Like, yeah. we'll put a link in the comments be- or in the description below for you guys to click to and yes. get to see some of the stuff that you guys did at Comic Con. Yeah, I also have a journal about about the trip and a lot of photos um, on my DeviantArt. Um, yeah, it was an awesome time. Like, definitely a good way to kick off the new LA life with a bunch of cool artists and DeviantArt yeah. and just. Which is how art should be. It should be something celebrated and exciting yeah. and fun. Yeah, I know. And like art is, I mean, it's creativity just exploding forth onto paper or yeah. sculptures or written word. Yeah. And it's even better when it's like you're experiencing it with other people that are passionate about the same thing. And they're all looking for that thing that you've been looking for. Like it's just, it's the right mix. I have not had enough of it, that's for sure. So, And one of the things that we talked about a lot, especially with that group at Comic-Con, was the idea of imposter syndrome. Oh because we had so many like stellar artists like Allie yeah. who go there and the first thing we hear is like, why me? Yeah. Like, why, why am I here? What? what uh, yeah. No. What was me as an I'm artist? I'm like, you guys, like, you made a mistake. Did you mean to email me? Yeah, these are... Mistake? That, I, I believe that was the looking at Matt, our uh, artist relations person. That was like the real email we got from Allie, right? It was like uh, wrong email, right? It's like, yeah. Sorry, you're, look, you're looking for <laughs> someone much better. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so not true because artists, uh, I feel a lot of them probably have that same experience you did oh, where like yeah. your time growing up and the very formative time of like when you're creating, people are asking things like, but how are you going to make money? But what's your real job? When are you going to become the horse doctor? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they, they want to know those yeah. things. Oh. And it kind of puts this, like, and even your time in art school, it sounds like you had just more and more negative reinforcement where it makes you feel like you're not doing enough for art or that your art isn't worthy. Yeah. So I want to talk on that a little bit because, like, your art is spectacular, which we've hopefully, like, shaken into you at this point. Like You've tried, <laughs> and I appreciate the effort. But, but talk, talk to us a little bit about your experience with, like, imposter syndrome and, like, how you feel that people can put, hopefully get a little bit more objective about what they do. Yeah, I'm still learning to kind of wrangle it myself. Um, hmm. It's... It's so complicated because, I don't know, I I guess I always just feel like I'm, I'm just that girl from North Idaho who just drew for fun in school. I just don't see how I could amount to much else, I guess. Like, I don't know. I just, I... I always, it was funny though, because like when I was, when I was in high school, I I constantly daydreamed about 
all these amazing things that I could become and all these things I could do. And I, I had big aspirations and dreams and I would, I would just like picture myself in all these crazy situations. And it's like, I've arrived and these things have happened to me and it's surreal, I guess. Like, and then I'm left with this feeling of like, well, it's like I wanted that, but like I don't feel like I deserve it. So it's it's really bittersweet for me because like I always feel like well someone else there's so many other like better artists or better um, people out there who probably like deserve it and um, it's I don't know I don't know what it is like moving to LA has really like ramped it up a little bit and I, I try to just like push it to the back of my mind like don't don't overthink it just just be glad and be grateful and just enjoy stuff but um I still like sometimes I feel like I'm like playing a video game or something where it's like I kind of have a disconnect from Ally White you know it's like I guess this is happening like, all these nice opportunities that come my way and I'm like I don't know why it's happening but I don't want to sabotage myself, so I'll do it. I wish I could kind of slow down and like go like, yeah, no, you you earned this and like it's fine. But I have a hard time with that. So, what are some specific examples of like some victories that you've had when you talk about like you know you've made these achievements and had some great things happen? Well, I mean, you guys got a hold of me. That was one. That was a weird day. Got this email like, hey, it's Deviant Art. What's up? Like, we want to hang out with you. Which is how professional our emails are. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's going on? Um, and that was kind of my first taste of like, I guess I'm like someone that people want to know more about. And like, I guess my art has like made the rounds enough to be like, yeah, it's, it's skirts. She's cool. Like, <laughs> I don't, it's, I don't know. I think uh, another thing that happened since I moved here is um, the company Way Forward has contacted me for some projects and like that's been really crazy because I don't know I just that's like my first time with something like that and I'm just like out of all the people like you guys wanted you picked me yeah and they're yeah. they're like a very well-known gaming yeah they're legit company. yeah yeah so I was like oh and they're all awesome like they want to work with me more and it's just like me trying to wrap my brain around this like <laughs> I uh it's like I'm over the moon about it but then I'm always like waiting to like wake up in my bed <laughs> like it was all a dream <laughs> <laughs> i don't know uh, uh well those, those are both great things so when you're trying to like uh rationalize or like find ways to stay objective about your like talent and your art and like your worth like what are some steps that you take to do that or that people who are finding doubt in their work like what could they do to help kind of balance themselves there um, for me, I find like you need to keep a timeline, like a visual timeline of like the journey thus far. Um, like I keep everything I've ever drawn. Um, I keep journals about like where I'm at each year of my life, you know, kind of like I try to, because it's easy to forget and the older you get, the faster time goes and it all becomes a blur. And sometimes you forget certain landmarks and it's like you shouldn't so if I start feeling like like why me kind of thing um or I'm not that good I don't get it like I'll stop and I'll I'll look at what I was doing even like I don't know four or five years ago and it's like wow like that's a huge difference here's all the stuff that's taken place since then and like I know that I've worked really hard like I may be hard on myself but I know that I've worked really hard so like I just look at how much time I've spent working on this craft and putting myself out there. And I guess it does start to make sense to me that like, yeah, like it does make sense why this is happening to me. Like it, I always tell myself like, oh, my whole career is just a fluke and it's all luck. And then I'm like, well, no, I mean, you've been posting like every day since 2005. <laughs> I think it's a little more than just luck, you know, like you have to, put in some effort and then, you know, you sow some seeds and then eventually they grow. You just got to keep watering them, right? Yeah. So it's not like I woke up with all this stuff. I mean, but that's how it feels sometimes. So that's why I have to look back and be like, well, what did you do to this point? Like, it, it's got to make sense somewhere. 
Like, I, it didn't just happen out of nothing. Yeah, so kind of like keeping track of the data. Yeah, you need like, to keep you need to keep some kind of timelines so you can remind yourself, like, I've been through a lot. I think one of the things that you hit that's, like, so easy to do is looking at that spread of time and saying, like, five years ago I drew this, and you see, like, the draw it again sort of yeah. stuff that people do. <laughs> yeah, I and, love doing those. Yeah, and even if it's not the same piece, just looking at the growth over that time. Yeah. Because well, like my my drawing from day one to day two might not show an improvement, but from day one to day a thousand is going to be completely oh, different. Especially if you keep at it. Like if you're drawing like every day, every other day, like you're you're going to improve. And if you don't compare your old work to your new work, you're never going to see your own growth. And then it's easy to get discouraged. And I feel like and it's also interesting to like when you look back at an old piece, you have to like remember where you were then, like what was in your mind, like the things you was were aspiring to. And I noticed like a lot of the things that I really wanted to happen have happened for me. And I always try to think like, even if I'm struggling with like, oh, like I, this is weird. Like, I can't believe this is happening to me. Like I have to remember to be happy for me five years ago. Like that girl would have been freaking out. Like enjoy this for her then because like if you're like you can't it's easier said than done like like you need to be proud of yourself and be like I deserve this um so yeah it's good to think about like the old yous because like you're still in there you still wanted those things and you still worked for them and it's hard and now you get them and you should party you should be so happy <laughs> like I know I know I just I sometimes I'm like should I talk about it? Like, do people care? I don't know. It's weird. Like that, that being said, like over the course of the time that I've known you, mm -hmm. there have been a couple of times where, you know, you've gotten to say like a little bit more about like, you know, how you feel about your art mm -hmm. and the support for you is insane. Mm -hmm. Like people like really genuinely care and like love your work and like the work that you put into it. Like it's so like huge. It's weird, man. It's it's not <laughs> weird when you look at all the stuff that you just told us to look at because like no, you've I've, done that time. I've like, been, you know, I've been very active in like kind of the art communities that I have placed myself in and like, yeah, I see that. But sometimes, and I've always tried to be very human you know, I, I don't want to be a manufactured robot. I don't want to hide too much of myself. Sometimes it seems easier to do that. But then, you know, I've noticed that, like, being being just also the human that does stuff. Like, people have been, like, really nice to me. Like, really, really nice to me all the time. And it it's still kind of, it's like, you're, you're taking energy and emotion and you're sending it my way and that's crazy but it's really endearing too because it's like oh that's for me from a, <laughs> another living being yeah <laughs> like it's it never gets old it's still shocking to me <laughs> i think if you would have like shown me my inbox for deviantart now if you would have taken it and shown it to me in 2005 when I started and I used to have a party over one comment and one fave, I would just keel over. I would just, just die. Like, are you kidding me? It's crazy. What do you think about, like, how the span of time, and now I have all these awesome people, like, my little cheerleaders in the comment section. And I'm like, I love these people. They're amazing. But why are they here? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, so what I'd like to do is let's let's take that positive energy and that idea of uh, celebrating someone, and I want to know three people that you follow on DeviantArt that you think are just awesome. Um, okay, so these are all lovely friends of mine that are constantly an inspiration, and I've been following them forever. But um, so there's Brianna Garcia, who does a lot of Disney stuff. She's amazing, um, and Sue I. Um, and David LaJoya. Those are like three. That's a great three. Amazing artists who it's like every time they post something new, it's like, oh, really, you guys? 
Uh, where can people find you on DeviantArt? Um, so you can just find me at Skirts with three Zs. Don't forget the Zs. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just Skirt. Um, but yeah, I'm always on there. Come talk to me. And again, I'm GG Matt B on DeviantArt. And thank you so much for joining us, guys. Thank you. Have a good one. Later. Bye. <laughs>